Welcome back and now with the news in detail, we start our news bulletin from the US, which has reported a record 53,096 new cases of COVID-19 over the past 24 hours as the total number of infections climbed past 2.7 million. Brazil surpassed 60,000 deaths from the coronavirus after recording more than 1,000 fatalities in the last 24 hours. The virus has killed over 520,000 people worldwide and infected more than 10.8 million. This report has the details. The new coronavirus is once again surging in the Americas, especially the United States. The number of confirmed cases in the U.S. climbed to an all-time high of more than 50,000 for the second consecutive day. 40 out of 50 states are now reporting a spike in new infections as the country struggles to handle the pandemic. As cases skyrocket in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott has made face covering mandatory in all public places. One of the best ways to keep businesses open while also slowing the spread is for everyone to wear a face covering like this when they go out. Medical studies have shown that wearing a face covering slows the spread of COVID-19 and it protects you and your family. Meanwhile in Africa, the Nigerian state of Kano ended its lockdown months after the outbreak, originally called a mysterious disease, killing hundreds of citizens. Ghana has pardoned 794 prisoners as part of measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in cluttered prisons. The World Health Organization has urged African governments to take effective measures to mitigate the risk of a surge in infections. The global health body also said there is very little risk that pets can infect their owners with COVID-19. In Asia, South Korea has reported 63 new coronavirus cases, triggering the return of tighter social distancing curbs in Seoul. It is concerning as small clusters are emerging in wide range of areas, making it harder for local governments and prevention workers doing epidemiological surveys. Tokyo has confirmed 107 new coronavirus infections, its highest daily tally in two months. But Japan's chief cabinet secretary said there is no need to reintroduce a state of emergency. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, 78 more people have died of COVID-19 in the past 24 hours, with the death toll rising to 4,551. The health ministry says some 4,000 new cases were detected, taking the tally of infections to nearly 222,000. The ministry said nearly 114,000 people have recovered from the virus so far. Officials said 2,479 patients are critically ill. The province of Sindh is badly hit by the virus with over 89,000 infections. Punjab has reported nearly 79,000 cases. In Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, the tally of infections has crossed 27,000, while there are nearly 11,000 cases in Balochistan. The capital city Islamabad has reported over 13,000 cases, while Azad, Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan have recorded more than 2,500 infections. In India, one of the most wanted criminals have killed eight policemen, including four officers in northern Uttar Pradesh state. UP Police Director General H.C. Avasti says five others have been wounded. Police had raided Bikru village in Kanpur district to arrest Vikas Dube, a dreaded gangster facing 60 criminal cases, including murder. Dube said and his gang rather blocked all the roads leading to the village. They ambushed the raiding police with indiscriminate fighting from rooftops. Avasti said the slain officers include a deputy superintendent and three sub-inspectors. Pakistan has asked the UN to take notice of violence against children in occupied Kashmir and urged India to stop terrorizing them. Speaking at the 44th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, Pakistan's ambassador Khalil Hashmi drew the attention of the UN towards the killing of a man in front of his three-year old grandson in occupied Kashmir. He said the human rights situation in occupied Kashmir aggravated after India stripped the region of its autonomy in August last year. Qureshi added that over 1.5 million children have endured the worst form of uh, violence since then. He said Indian forces are committing grave human rights violations, including forced abductions, torture and extrajudicial killing in the valley. Indian occupation forces have marched 56 Kashmiris since June the 1st. 
Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has discussed bilateral ties and matters of mutual interest with his Danish counterpart Jepeko Ford. In a video conference, the two sides exchanged views on the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on economy. He expressed hope that Denmark will support the coordinated actions to create fiscal space needed by the developing countries to deal with the crisis. Qureshi also briefed the Danish minister on Pakistan efforts to contain the virus. The Danish Foreign Minister offered condolences on the loss of precious lives in the terrorist attack on the Pakistan Stock Exchange building earlier this week. The Taliban have rejected a Pentagon report stating that the Islamic Emirate continues to support Al-Qaeda in the region. In a statement, spokesperson Zabiul Lama Jahid said the U.S. should stop individuals in its military from propagating a false narrative. Mujahi said the Emirates does not support any foreign organization in the region or any other place. He assured the Taliban are committed to the implementation of the Doha Pact and bringing comprehensive peace to Afghanistan. The Taliban spokesperson warned that propaganda at this sensitive time could be counterproductive for peace efforts. He said that there are individuals in the U.S. military who still seek war in Afghanistan for their personal interests or the interests of the defense companies. Venezuela has reversed an earlier decision to expel the EU ambassador in response to the bloc sanctions on Caracas. President Nicolas Maduro says the step has been taken after agreeing with the bloc to maintain the framework of diplomatic relations. Maduro said Venezuela's foreign minister Jorge Areza and EU's foreign minister Joseph Borrell spoke over a phone call to resolve the issue. Speaking at a military event in Caracas, he said it was an appropriate decision as the world will get to hear the truth about Venezuela. Foreign Minister Ariaza has informed Joseph Burrell that as President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, I have decided to suspend the expulsion of the European Union Ambassador in Caracas to publish a joint communique between both institutions, like we've done, and to proceed to a new stage of dialogue between the High Representative, George Burrell, and the Foreign Minister of the Bolivarian Republic, George Ariaza. Maduro said he had suspended the orders to open a new stage of dialogue with the 27-country bloc. Now moving on, Qatar has once again rejected Israel's annexation plan, Jewish settlements and Judaization of Jerusalem. A team led by Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh met with Qatar's foreign minister Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Attani in Doha. The team praised Doha for supporting the Palestinian people. Attani said Qatar will continue to support all the efforts to ensure national unity in Palestine. Israel's new government is expected to present its strategy this month for implementing the deal of the century proposed by the U.S. President Donald Trump. The plan gives Israel a free hand to annex large parts of the West Bank, including the Jordan Valley, which Israel occupied in 1967. Meanwhile, Palestine's political factions and pro-Palestine activists have protested in the occupied territories and abroad against Israel's annexation plan. Turkey has accused the United Arab Emirates of embarking on a campaign to stifle democratic movements in the Middle East and North Africa. Turkey's ambassador to the UN, Faridun Sunil Loglu, called on the Security Council to remind the UAE of its duty under the international law. Sunil Loglu said Abu Dhabi is excessively ambitious to dominate the wider region, uh, which is resulting in nothing but human suffering. He said the UAE must stop its destructive and malicious policies in the region. The UAE is part of a Saudi-led coalition that launched an air campaign to roll back Houthi territorial gains in 2015. This further escalated the crisis in Yemen. The Turkish envoy also accused Abu Dhabi of supporting Khalifa Haftar's forces in Libya, wanting to oust the UN-recognized government in the country. In Libya, six more corpses have been unearthed from mass graves in the western city of Tarhuna. In a statement, Libya's government said the bodies were unearthed during ongoing excavation work. The statement said a total of 30 corpses have been found in Tarhuna so far. Libyan authorities have announced that there were 11 mass graves and around the city. The Libyan army recently inflicted heavy blows on Khalifa Haftar's forces and liberated the cities of Tripoli and Tarhuna. Libya has been torn by civil war since the ouster of late ruler Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. 
The International Organization for Migration says the Libyan Coast Guard rescued 102 illegal immigrants of the country's western coast. IOM said its staff will provide assistance to Libyan Coast Guard at the disembarkation point. The organization said nearly 300 migrants were rescued by the Coast Guard in the past day. IOM estimates that more than 5,400 immigrants have been rescued and returned to Libya so far in 2020. The state of violence in Libya makes the country a preferred point of departure for thousands of illegal immigrants wanting to cross into Europe. The chair of the African Union Commission has urged Ethiopians to refrain from violence following the death of singer Hachalu Handessa. This comes after the protests that follow Handessa's death claimed at least 81 lives. In a statement, Musa Faki Mehmed also called on the government of Ethiopia to bring the perpetrators to justice. It said the Commission encourages all the sides to resolve the differences through dialogue and peaceful means. Mehmet reaffirmed support for the Ethiopian government in their efforts to promote a stable and prosperous country. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has warned he will not tolerate any further destruction of public property and infrastructure. Internet service remains suspended across the country since Tuesday. Most stories to follow, but right after a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back. Russia says its S-500 Prometheus defense system will be capable of destroying hypersonic weapons in near-Earth space. In a statement, Russian Air Space Forces Commander Sergei Surovikin said the S-500 is a first-generation space defense network. Surovikin said the air defense system currently has no equivalent in the world as it can also destroy aerodynamic and ballistic targets. He said the weapon's main tasks will include combating medium-range ballistic missiles and intercontinental ballistic missiles in close proximity. The Prometheus, also known as Triumphator M, is a universal combination of long-range and high-altitude interception with increased missile defense potential. Uh, Russia's defense ministry says the cutting-edge defense system will be deployed in 2021. The UK's National Crime Agency says forces have busted a top-secret communication system used by criminals to trade drugs and guns. The agency worked with teams across Europe to conduct the operation after messages on EncroChat were intercepted and decoded. It said nearly 800 criminals involved in the network have been arrested. While over two tons of drugs, several dozen guns and £54 million in suspect cash have been seized. An estimated 60,000 people, among them up to 10,000 in Britain, subscribed to France-based EncroChat. A UN-led report has found that the world dumped a record of 53.6 million tons of e-waste in 2019. The Global e-waste Monitor 2020 report said just 17.4% of the waste was recycled. The report found that China, with 10.1 million tons, was the biggest contributor to the e-waste. And the US was second with 6.9 million tons. It said India comes third with 3.2 million tons. Global warming is just one issue cited by the report, as it noted 98 million tons of carbon dioxide was released into the atmosphere due to inadequate recycling. This year's coronavirus lockdowns have exacerbated the problem. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has urged EU governments to quickly come together to authorize a massive economic response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In a press conference with EU Commission President, Merkel said Europe is currently in its most difficult phase of history. Wanda Lien said people are losing jobs every day and the companies are busting. She said the crisis needs an unprecedented response. The leaders of the 27 EU nations are meeting in Brussels on July the 17th to hash out the details of an $800 billion recovery package. Stocks in Asia have edged higher as positive economic data raised optimism about an economic recovery from COVID-19. 
Investor confidence was buoyed by a private survey showing China's services sector growing at its fastest pace in over a decade in June. Mainland Chinese stocks have risen, with the Shanghai Composite jumping over 1% and the Shenzhen component by over half a percent. Overall, the MSCI Asia X Japan Index gained a fraction. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 gained almost 1%, but the Topics Index was flat. South Korea's KOSPI advanced more than half a percent, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng is trading over 1% higher. Over in Australia, the S&P ASX 200 was flat. And now the weather situation from around the globe. That's all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Industop News.